And so uh, the following evening I brought Jim for dinner. I had known Jim slightly in high school. In high school Jim was a star. He uh, he had tremendous Irish good nature with uh, vitality. He shone like scrub and polished white shine where he always seemed to move in a continual spotlight. Star basketball player, the the captain of the debating club, uh, the president of the uh, senior class and the glee club, and uh, lead male vocal in the annual lights opera. He was always running and bounding, never just walking. He seemed to defy gravity. He was shooting with such velocity in his adolescence that one would logically anticipate him to end up nowhere short of the White House at the age of 30, but he seemed to have run into some interference after he graduated from Soldan. His pace had definitely slowed. Six years after he left high school, he was holding a job that wasn't much better than mine. He was the only person I was on good terms with at work. See, I was valuable to him because I knew about his former glory. I had seen him win basketball games. I had seen him hold up the silver cup for debating. And he knew about my ritual about going into the washroom, the cabinet in the washroom, um, and working on some poetry when the work at the warehouse was slack. The other boys, they treated me with suspicious hostility, but he always treated me with humor. His attitude eventually wore off their hostility, and they started to smile at me. Like one would smile at an oddly shaped dog crossing your path, you know. I knew he and Laura knew each other in high school. She always spoke so admiringly of his voice. I'm not sure if he remembered her. She was as unobtrusive as he was astonishing in high school. And if you did remember, when I asked him to come to dinner, it wasn't at my sister, you know. Because he said, You know, Shakespeare, you don't look like the kind of person that folks. <laughs> but he was sooner discovered that I did. <laughs>